In this video, I want to continue our discussion as to how we can represent the Gauss-Markov assumptions of homoscedasticity and of no autocorrelation amongst errors in matrix form. And at the end of the last video, we got that the variance of our random vector u, given x was equal to the expectation of this matrix on the right here, given that we have our independent variables x. And if we continue to work with this, we know that the expectation of a matrix is just the same thing as the matrix of the individual expectations. So I'm actually going to forgo writing the given x here just because it will become really messy, but essentially this is just equal to the matrix where the first component is just going to be the expectation of u1 squared. Second component in the first row is just going to be the expectation of u1 times u2. And then the last of a component in the row is going to be the expectation of u1 times un, where implicitly here I am sort of should be writing given x in each of these individual expressions. And then if we move to the second row, we're going to have that the first component is just going to be the expectation of u2 times u1 given x. And we can sort of see straight away that that's actually going to be the same thing as this expression because it doesn't matter whether I'm multiplied by u2 um, times u1 first or the other way around, they're both exactly the same thing because both of these things are just scalars. The second component is just going to be the expectation of u2 squared given x, and then we could continue to fill out that row and if we could also continue to fill out the columns. And then if we go to the last uh, row in our matrix, that's just going to be, and, and look at the last component, it's just going to be the expectation of u n squared given x. Okay, so this is our variant of our vector u in matrix form. How now can we translate our conditions of homoscedasticity and no autocorrelation into this particular matrix? Well, essentially, our first condition was that the variance of the individual u given x is just going to be equal to a constant, sigma squared. Well, since we know that the expectation of an individual error ui is equal to zero, essentially the variance of a individual error ui given xi is just exactly the same thing as the expectation of ui squared given xi. And we've actually got this. These are each of our diagonal components. And we know from the sort of scalar model that we require each of these diagonal components in our matrix to be exactly the same, they all have to be equal to sigma squared. So we're going to make each of these diagonal components equal to sigma squared in our new matrix. What about the off-diagonal components? How might they be useful? Well, if we look up here in terms of our condition of no autocorrelation, we require that the covariance of ui with uj has to be equal to zero. And the covariance of ui with uj can actually be written in a very similar form to the variance. The covariance of ui with uj, given that we have xi and xj, is just going to be equal to the expectation of ui times uj, given that we have xi and xj. Because again, we're assuming that the individual expectations of ui and uj are both equal to zero. And we see that these are actually what we have in our matrix in terms of the off-diagonal components. And in order to have no autocorrelation, we require that each of these off-diagonal components must be equal to zero. So taking these two things, we can rewrite our matrix. And our matrix is going to have the form, well, each of the diagonal components are going to be sigma squared. So that's sort of the first component, the se second diagonal component. And then the nth diagonal component is still going to be sigma squared. And all of the off-diagonal components are going to be equal to zero. So we can represent our matrix in a fairly sort of simple form, which we can actually simplify a little bit further. This is just equal to sigma squared times the identity matrix I, where the identity matrix I is a matrix which has only diagonal components equal to one, and all off-diagonal components are equal to zero. So in a fairly compact way, we can represent the two conditions of both having homoscedastic errors and no autocorrelation by just a single expression in matrix form, which is that the variance of u given x has to be equal to sigma squared times the identity matrix i.